All right, if you could take your hymn, we'll turn to song number 63, 63. Take the name of Jesus with you, song number 63. Good, stand with me for this uh, first song here this morning, song number 63. Take the name of Jesus with you. together today. We just want to praise and thank you for that. Thank you for the millions of blessings you're sending our way. We ask you to help us to remember to take your name and use it wherever we go to honor it and glorify it. Lord, I'm asking you to be with these tithes and offerings given to you today. Pray and ask that you use them for your honor and glory to help spread your name. I ask all in your son's name. Amen. Amen. booklets for the month of July. Malia has the ones for the children and the young people. These boys have the, the ones for the adults and the teenagers. So uh, when they come around, uh, raise your hand or motion to them to give you one. And uh, go ahead, guys. Seth, you take this side over here. Nicholas, you take that side. All right, Malia, you got the whole church. Go for it. All right. 
So help help Malia to know who to give those to for the, the children, okay? All right, a couple of announcements very quickly. Next Sunday will be the first Sunday of July, the 5th. July 5th, we will, after the morning service next Sunday, we will have a cookout at the after the morning service. We'll go outside. We're going to have grills set up. We're going to have hamburgers and hot dogs. And according to the vote from last Sunday, we are going to actually cook them here on the grounds while you're starving. While you're waiting, instead of having them pre-made in crock pots. Oh, sorry, honey. That was my fault. <laughs> okay. Thank you for getting them for me. It's a lot easier for her to bend over than it is me. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Malia. You're such a good worker. I didn't catch them, did I? Sorry about that. Now, does anybody have uh, children that you know of at, in your neighborhood or home or whoever who might like to use some of these? Miss Frida, Malia, would you come here? Would you take these again? If you have somebody you can help by giving these two children in your neighborhood or grandchildren or somebody like that, tell Malia and she'll give them to you. You just tell her how many you want or she's walking around. Now, do we have any of the other ones that left, boys, Nicholas and Seth? They're all gone? Nicholas? Oh, I guess they're all gone. Okay. Sorry. Oh, okay. Okay. So, next Sunday is the cookout. Be ready. The church will furnish all the meat. We'll furnish the hamburger and the hot dog meat. Okay? Uh, thank you, honey. That was very nice. Do good job. We'll furnish the meat. Uh, so, if you, will, can, if you want to bring some uh, the side dishes and condiments and buns and chips and all this, whatever stuff you want, bring that. And when you get here and you say, well, I don't, you don't have what I want, that means you should have brought it, okay? <laughs> if there's something special you want, you need to bring because nobody will know that you want it, right? So bring what you like to put on yours and then just bring enough for yourself and your family and, and maybe one or two extra. That way you can share it with other people and we can all share it. We'll just pot, put it all in one great big bowl and we'll just stir it up and we're gonna share it that way. <laughs> Sounds yummy, doesn't it, Angie? Do you want James to be in like black sauce? What? Do you want to set the tent up like black sauce? Yes. We will put we'll put shelters up in case it's hot or rainy or whatever. Yes. Um, how many of you will sit out in the ninety one degree heat we're gonna have next Sunday and eat? Instead of sitting in the shell in the building over here in the air conditioning. How many are gonna sit out in the heat and eat your food? How many are you going to set in the air conditioning? Okay. <laughs> All right. Very smart. All right. That's fine. Either place you want to sit, it's fine. We have that building, that old building over there is not much, but it, the air conditioner works right now. So uh, we'll have that set up for you. And uh, anybody who wants to eat in there, you, you feel free to do that. Now, that's next Sunday. The following Sunday is the 12th. We go back to our normal schedule at church. Sunday school at 10 o'clock, preaching at 11, break for lunch, pitch in lunch, and then uh, we come back here about 1.30 or so, and we'll have an afternoon church service, all right? And we'll, we'll be doing that. Matter of fact, the afternoon church service is going to be beginning a brand new series of somethings, and I'll tell you about that when, when we have it, okay? This week, we had an opportunity to buy a good used refrigerator for the church um, we we found it it's only about three or four years old best we can tell and uh, it's a seems like a good one it's a it's a large one larger than the one we had it's not a giant but it's it's bigger than what we had and we needed we had a small one over there that, that uh, was free and it, it's been serving a purpose still works but it doesn't have much room in it so when we have these meals and things we need a place to put food until we eat it so it won't spoil or melt or whatever it does and uh, so we now we have one so i'm so thankful we had an opportunity to buy one this week for the church and that was a blessing um uh, let's see 
seemed like there's something else. At the end of this service, I'd like to meet with, now listen carefully, I want to meet with Micah Rances one-on-one. -on -one. You're my first. The second meeting is I want to meet with everybody who is serving in junior church or wants to serve in junior church. If you're interested in serving in junior church, all right? To serve in leadership in the church, you need to be a church member first, right? That's how it works. Be a church member, uh, not one who's causing any trouble for the preacher. <laughs> that part's a joke, okay? You all cause problems for the preacher. No, I'm kidding. All right, so come over here and meet in this section right over here in the front at the end of the service. When I finish uh, with Micah, then I'll meet with you. And I need to meet with you because next Sunday we're going to start junior church again. Start during the 11 o'clock service. We'll come in here and meet. Our regular schedule will be everybody comes in here and meets. We sing a couple of songs and then we release the junior church and they go out to the other building and have their junior church time together. So that begins next Sunday. What do you think, Malia? You like that? Okay, very good. <laughs> I thought you would. Noah, you like junior church too? You'd rather listen to me preach for an hour, wouldn't you? You would? Oh boy, how about that? We'll see if he says that at the end of the sermon today. Okay. Okay, am I finished? Okay, Brother Don, come on up. Did have one more quick announcement for those who want to sing a special with us next week. I have a little thing I was playing with in my head this morning. So if you want to come up and practice that after church tonight, I guess it'd be after the second meeting. Because I'm I won't be in the second meeting. I cause too many problems for the preacher. But for those who want to do that after the second meeting, practice that song. If you want to sing with us, come on up and we'll go over it. But for now, we're going to sing song 488, 488. I will sing of my Redeemer. We'll sing the first and last verse. Sorry, 489. Can't just correct me. 489, first and last verse of glory to his name. Down at the cross where my Savior died. Down where for cleansing from sin I cried. There Precious love. 
Jesus is, how our look at him should be, what we should see him as, and a little bit of what he's doing for us. And if you know any of the songs, feel free to hop in, and we don't have the music for it, so we don't, our pianist ran away. <laughs> Isn't he wonderful, wonderful, wonderful? Isn't Jesus my Lord wonderful? Eyes have seen, ears have heard, it's recorded in God's Word. Isn't Jesus my Lord wonderful? Wonderful, wonderful Jesus is to me. Counselor, Prince of Peace, mighty God is He. Saving me, keeping me from all sin and shame. Wonderful is my Redeemer, praise His name, precious name. Oh, how sweet hope of earth and joy of heaven, precious name. Oh, how sweet, how sweet hope of earth and joy of heaven. My Savior's face. Heaven is a wonderful, heaven is a glorious, heaven is a wonderful place. But until then, my heart will go on singing. Until then, with joy I'll carry on. Until the day my eyes behold the sea. My treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blue. The angels beckon me from heaven's open door. 
And I can't feel at home in this world anymore. More, more about Jesus. More, more about Jesus. More of his saving fullness. More of his love who died for me. first time they've done that here in our church. I'm so glad they did. That's good. Yeah. What a blessing. I don't think I've ever heard that medley of course put together like that. That was really, really super. Mm -hmm. Good job. Of course, if I had been singing with them, it would have been a lot better. <laughs> but um... That does remind me for the songs I was uh, playing on Play With My Head, I need some good male voices. Oh, good. You need some good male voices. I, I can take a hint. All right. He needs, he, he's wanting to recruit some good male voices. Got a good one. He's sitting right there. What's Bert? Bert's, Bert's leaning way over so he won't point at him. Oh, Bert, I think he got you. He couldn't move fast enough. <laughs> don't want this guy right here singing behind me. He's, he's, he's too don't let Tom do it, huh? No. You two couldn't hear it, too. No, it'd be, it'd be yeah, Tom, they needed to throw Tom and I both in the same sack and tie the top. You know, not let any one of us sing. <laughs> Amen. All right. Well, we're finished picking on Tom and I hope you're finished picking on me. It's not likely, but we, we don't want to finish picking on Brother Don, though. All right. Um, as you can see, is that working? Okay. Baptism. Remember, we've been, last Sunday we started this uh, short series on, uh, on baptism. And uh, last week we talked about what is the meaning of baptism. Let me refresh your memory and we're going to rehearse very, very quickly because we've used up a lot of our time today with other things and that's fine. But it uh, doesn't mean I want to keep you later than necessary, okay? I've been keeping you late a lot lately and I don't apologize for it, but I do want to be mindful of that, okay? What is the meaning of baptism? Baptism is the first step of obedience after you get saved after believing all right it's not a step of obedience to be saved but it's a step of obedience after you're saved because baptism doesn't save you baptism doesn't make a difference whether you go to heaven or not all right and a lot of people will teach that it does but i want them to show me every scripture they can come up with that teaches that and i'll show you how they've taken it out of its context to make it say what they say it says. And we're gonna show you some of those verses today that have been taken out of context. We're gonna deal with that in a minute. Matthew 28, 19 and 20, uh, we read last week, that we call that the Great Commission where Jesus tells his disciples and he tells us to go to teach and to baptize, okay? And baptism is a picture of the gospel, a picture, it's a symbol, it's symbolic, of the gospel, the death, burial, and resurrection. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 3 and 4, talk about the gospel being the death, burial, resurrection of Jesus Christ. That's the gospel. Okay? So, baptism shows that the believer identifies with Christ. The baptism is a, it's symbolic of what's happened to you spiritually, and it shows that you identify yourself with Jesus Christ, Romans chapter 6, we read that last week. That's why I'm just rehearsing now. I'm not, not really teaching this, I'm just rehearsing it. It is an announcement of my discipleship to Christ. It's letting everybody know a public testimony that I'm now following the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what a disciple of the Lord Jesus means, that you're following him, you're allowing him to lead you. The next question we ask, not just what is the meaning of baptism, but we also ask the question, does baptism make you a Christian? Does it save you? Okay. And we, we discovered by, by reading scripture that it is only your personal faith 
in what Jesus did for you on the cross that saves you. It's only your faith in Christ and what he did for you by dying on the cross to pay for your sins that saves you. Water, no matter how it's applied, sprinkled, sprayed, dribbled, dunked, however you want to do it, water does not save us. All right? The religious rituals that we like to claim as being so important, they don't save us. All right? The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9, very clearly, very clearly, that it's not by works that we are saved. Not by works, lest any man should boast. All right. Now, we're going to pick up from there. And we are going to study two controversial, I call them controversial, they're really not, verses or texts in the Bible that are used by people who teach that you must be baptized in order to go to heaven. All right? These, there are several churches, denominations, groups, whatever you want to call them. There, there are different groups that teach that you must be baptized in order to go to heaven. They believe that you trust in what Jesus did, plus you got to do something else. You got to be baptized. You got to live a good life. You got to produce good works. You know, well, it's grace plus works is the way it, that adds up. All right? They add the two together. The same thing. Remember, the Apostle Paul and the Apostle Peter were teaching and telling the churches in the New Testament early ages to watch out for people coming into your church to teach you that you've got to. Trust in Jesus and obey the law. They were called, they're not named this in the Bible, but theologians have named them Judaizers. The Judaizers were people who would teach that you've got to have Jesus and Old Testament law in order to go to heaven, in order to be saved. In, in a sense, this teaching that it's Jesus or grace plus something else is doing the same thing. It's teaching Jesus by faith, plus good works of some kind, whether it be baptism or something else. They add the two together in order to get saved. It's teaching exactly the same kind of false teaching that the Judaizers did, that Paul preached against, Peter preached against, the Apostle John warned people of, we need to be careful. Well, the first text we're going to talk about that these false teachers use is in Mark chapter 16. I want you to look there with me. Mark chapter 16, please. Mark chapter 16, the end of the gospel account of Mark. Verse, um, let's read the context. Let's read more of, of the context here. This is after Jesus has arose from the grave. He is resurrected already. He has appeared to the disciples uh, to several of them. He's appeared to many people, presented himself alive after his death, and he has taught them and shown them that he's alive. But some of them did not believe because they haven't seen him yet, so they didn't believe. Mark chapter 16, if you will look at verse 12. Look at verse 12. Mark 16, verse 12. After that, he appeared in another form unto two of them as they walked and went into the country. Now, the other Gospels give us the story of the two disciples walking on the road to Emmaus. It's the same event that we've just described right here. And, and Jesus appeared to them, and they didn't recognize him. And he sat with them, and he broke bread, and he blessed it. And when he did, their eyes were open. They recognized who he was, and he was gone out of their appearance. He was gone from their presence, I mean. Verse 13, And they went and told it unto the residue, unto the other disciples. Look carefully. Neither believed they them. All right? Verse 14, Afterward, he appeared unto the eleven. Remember, there were twelve disciples. Judas is gone now. So there are 11. 
He appeared unto the eleven as they sat at meat. They were having a meal together. And look what Jesus did. And upbraided them with their unbelief and hardness of heart. Does it sound like he gave them a little bit of a teaching lesson? I think he did. For their unbelief and hardness of heart. Listen, folks. The Lord Jesus could give every one of us some hard words for our unbelief and our hardness of heart. So don't think we're much better than those disciples because we're not. We have the same problem. Because they believed not them which had seen him after he was risen. Verse 15. Here's our text. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. And he that believeth, and look here, and is baptized shall be saved. If Jesus stopped his sentence there, then absolutely you could say, hey, Jesus said you believe and you be baptized so that you can get saved, so that you can go to heaven. But Jesus didn't stop talking there, did he? No. He said, you believe. Why did he say be baptized? Because it was already understood in the New Testament when a person got saved, the first thing they did was went and got baptized. Every person that got saved in the New Testament, every one of them, when they got saved, the next thing they did was got baptized. It was understood. You didn't have to teach why you need to get baptized. What's the symbol mean? What's it about? Why, do you, why is this so important? No, nope, they already knew. They already understood it. They already understood they're identifying with Jesus Christ. They already understood it's a symbolic of his death, burial, and resurrection and what Jesus has done for me now. I'm a new person now, so I need to be baptized to identify with Jesus, to let everybody know I'm his disciple now. I'm his follower. They already understood all that. And they readily, quickly said, I'm going to be baptized. I need to be baptized. All right? And they did it. But look what happened. Verse 16. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not or and is not baptized shall be damned. Are you checking the scripture with me? Did you read along with me? Did it, did it say that if you're not baptized... No. It says if you don't believe, then you are condemned to hell. If you don't believe. He didn't say anything about if you're not baptized. He said if, you're not, if you don't believe. If baptism is so important, why did he say if, you're not, if you don't believe and be baptized, then you'll go to hell? Why didn't he say that? Because that's not the teaching of the Lord Jesus Christ. He didn't teach that. But he that believeth not shall be damned. And children, can I, can I say something here? Um, you're going to hear the word damn used by people who are cursing and saying a bad word. When I'm reading it from the Bible, I'm not saying a bad word. Okay? I'm, because to damn somebody means they are condemned. They are being punished. Okay? When God says that somebody is damned... It means they're being punished for their sins. or their, for the, Actually, not for their sins. They're, they're being damned because they have rejected Jesus Christ. Now they are condemned to hell forever. Okay? So, but when, when a preacher says it or, or somebody says it in the, from the Bible, it is not a bad word. It is not a curse word. I'm not cursing and saying anything bad. I just want you to understand that. All right? Now, if I say it in a cursing way, you need to say, Preacher, you're not supposed to talk like that. Amen, adults? Amen. I said, Amen, adults. Amen. Clean your mouth up. Get rid of it. Adults, act like adults. Quit acting like junior high kids who want to impress everybody just using curse words. Boy, I thought we were in a Baptist church. Quit acting like junior high kids who want to impress somebody for using curse words. Amen. You better stay with me or I'll park right there and preach for a while. 
All right. You know how this goes. Okay. Thank you, folks. I'm picking on you. Now, but I'm not joking. <laughs> now, it shows us here in this text in Mark 16 that the person is condemned to hell because they don't believe. Not because they're not baptized. Being bap baptism is something they do after they believe. It's a natural thing. It's what happens. It's what people do. It's what we're supposed to do. Today, we have, because of our unbelief and hardened heart, we refuse to be baptized. We've got to negotiate it. We've got to figure out if it's a good thing to do. We've got to see if it's what I ought to do or not. Hey, the Bible says, be believe and be baptized. Amen? Amen. Amen. It is the natural order. But we have turned it into something that we just, well, it's an option. No, there's no option. You follow the Lord, you want to be obedient to the Lord, you can follow through. You follow through. You do what you're supposed to do. Okay? John chapter 14, verse 23. John chapter 14, verse 23. And Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man love me, he will keep my words, and my Father will love him. And we will come unto him and make our abode with him. But look what he says. If a man love me, he will keep my words. If you want to obey the Lord, you want to be obedient. If you love him, you keep his words. Amen. I don't think that's very hard to understand. Do you? No, sir. All right. So let's, let's practice. And, and listen. Adults, can I just give you a quick lesson here? Adults, listen to me. If you want your kids to learn to obey you, and you want them to say, yes, ma'am, yes, sir, then you show them how you obey God. If they say disobedience in adults, if they, say they see disobedience in your life, they are not going to be as willing to learn to obey if they see that you haven't learned to obey. What, you weren't, if you weren't here for Sunday school, you missed a good lesson on submission. We were learning uh, in a video about Christ honoring music. And I think everybody ought to be here for that. You ought to be here for Sunday school at 10 o'clock and sit in on these videos about Christ honoring music because it doesn't just have to do with church music, right? Teenagers, does it just have to do with church music? Music is in every part of our lives, correct? Amen. Is music in every part of our lives? Yes. Okay. Every part of our lives is influenced by music. We ought to be soaking up Christ-honoring music in every part of our lives, not just in a church service. Amen? Amen? K-Love is not soaking up God-honoring music, folks. K-Love is the radio station in Louisville that is wicked. They call themselves Christian, but there's not a thing about it Christian. Not a speck. The teachers they promote, the Bible doctrine they promote, the music they promote, it's world, world, world. Prove me wrong. You say, well, I heard them had a good teacher. Then what's that teacher doing on that radio station? Maybe that's the only place he can, because there aren't very good radio stations around here. I admit that. There aren't very good ones, very good, many that promote real good sound doctrine. So praise the Lord, he was able to get the truth out there even through them. But listen to me. Uh, we need to be careful what we soak up in our lives. This is a second sermon. This one's free. I don't charge it for this. I charge it for the other. But the, the music, folks, is important. We need to be paying attention to what we soak up in our lives. Let me tell you something. I'm not saying I can figure out what's in people's hearts. But when I'm around people, and you can do this too if you'll just pay attention. When I'm around people for a short time, a few minutes or a few days, or whatever it takes, depending on how much conversation we have, I can tell you whether a person is listening to godly music or wicked music in their private time when they're alone, in their car, wherever they may be, what they're soaking up with their life, what kind of junk they're feeding their mind on TV, I can tell you, because it shows. If a person is soaking up Christ-honoring, God-honoring, biblical, scriptural music, the stuff that honors God, brings us closer to God, you can see it. You'll see a joy. You'll see a, uh, and I'm not talking about being happy. That's a different thing. Happiness is fine. 
But happiness goes up and down, right? Amen. One day you're happy, next day you're sad. Right. But joy will be there. Amen. And I'm talking about uh, uh, when, when, you, when you're soaking up the right thing and putting it in the right thing, uh, back to the basics here. Children, how do we put things in our minds? Through our ears. ears, through our eyes. What you soak up into your mind goes in your ears, goes in your eyes, correct? If you're putting the right stuff in, the right stuff's going to come out. You know, when I get around a, a young person and, and, and they're standing talking to me and they're sitting there saying, I can't do it very well, but you know what I mean. They can't stand still because they're wiggling because they got rhythm in them and they're, they're thinking about the song. You know what I'm talking about? Because they got the world's music in them, it comes out. I may be, I may be talking about an extreme situation, I understand that, but it does happen. It does. You listen to trash, trash is going to come out. Let's change sermons. How about that? Let's just, let's just preach on this for a few minutes. You know what I'm talking about, folks? And I know you know what I'm talking about. Only the youngest of the youngest in this room don't know what I'm talking about. But the rest of you, you know. You listen to trash, it's going to show. It's going gonna, it's gonna to come out the way you talk. It's going to come out the way you talk. The kind of speech you use. The kind of language you use. It's going to come out in the, the way you think about things. It's going to come out the way you react to situations. That's the best, well, I'll tell you, that's the best evidence of what we put in is how we react in a, a momentary wow situation. Isn't it? One of those situations where you get shocked with something and it happens and your reaction shows what you've been putting in. Am I right? Am I right, folks? Yes. It shows what you've been putting in. You've been putting in the world's music and the world's trash, the world's movies, and the filth of this world. You put that junk in, it's going to come out. You may cover it up in church and you sit and look sweet and act like, like old Leo over here. You know, I'm, I'm picking on you. <laughs> I'm picking on Leo. <laughs> like all of us. Amen? Amen. And you know, we, can, we can pretend and, and cover it up, but I'll tell you what, you let something happen to you to shock you, and it's going to come out. Amen? It does, hey, I'm no different than you are. If I've been putting in the right stuff, the right stuff's going to come out. If I've been putting in the wrong stuff, the wrong stuff is going to come out. I'm no different than anybody else in this room. When I'm close to the Lord, it shows when I react. When I'm backslid, and I hate, oh, the preacher gets backslid? Yes, the preacher gets backslid. Just like you do. And then it can happen just in a moment. It can happen in a day. It can happen in the morning. It can happen in the evening. It can happen over, over just over a minute or two time, you're backslid. Because all you have to do is say no to the Lord, and you've already slid back. I don't mean you lose your salvation. That's not what we're talking about. You don't lose your salvation because you slide back. When you slide back, it means you're not, you're, your relationship with the Lord is still there. Father and son, father and daughter. Relationship's not broken. But the fellowship, the closeness, is broken. You break that closeness, you break that fellowship, it shows when you hit with some shock and causes you to react in a moment when you don't have time to pretend and act differently, right? Right? right. That's the truth. Now, Ricky, uh, when you were uh, in the military, and I don't know where, I don't start giggling because I'm talking serious now. Pay attention. Ricky, straighten up. <laughs> I'm kidding. Brother Ricky, when, when you were in the military, I don't know where or what situation where you would have seen the most action, the most combat. But in the situation where, in any general situation where soldiers are facing combat, are they, when, if all of a sudden everything's quiet, everything's calm, just sailing along, everything's quiet, no problems. All of a sudden, it happens. Without any warning, just that quick. 
do you have time to say, okay, now wait a minute, we gotta put together a plan, let's do this? Or do you just have to react? Yeah. Now, what do, you re what do you revert back to when you react? Your training. Yeah. You revert back to your training. Right. Not what you're thinking, not what you plan all of a sudden, you're gonna to put together this plan in an instant, no. The plan's already there because you've trained yourself to do that, right? Mm -hmm. You revert back to your training. You revert back training, right, Steve? You know what you do? You revert back to training. Whatever you've trained, that's what you're gonna, that's how you're gonna react. How do you train as a Christian? You put the right stuff in all the time. Put the Word of God in you. Put godly music in you. Put godly teaching in you. Put the right stuff in. You're going to get the right stuff out. And you're going to react in the right way. Amen. Right. Amen? It'll make a difference. Miss uh, Alyssa. She's sitting over here, by the way. Young lady on the far front corner over here. Raise your hand, Alyssa. Miss Alyssa works at Arby's. Okay. Yeah. If you can get a coupon, you can afford to eat there. Oh, that's even better. I like that. But Miss Alyssa works at Arby's, and you know the restaurants. Most of them now are just drive-through, and they they do a great job. They used to have a horrible drive-through. Arby's was the slowest. It was the off. It was just awful but then she started working and everything fixed it got better no seriously they work really hard and the other day we had a coupon we, we like those coupons Alyssa we had a coupon Miss Glenda and I pulled up to the drive through and Miss Alyssa has started to recognize our voices when we pull up to the drive through because we we save that coupon we don't give it to them unless they ask for it <laughs> Because we only got one or two, you know, and if you give it to them, then you don't get it back, and you, you don't have a coupon to come back with, and we can't, we can't afford it unless we got a coupon. So we pull up to the drive through speaker, you know, we're talking, and, I, and we know Alyssa's voice as soon as we hear it. You know, she's got this really good, clear, easy-to-understand voice, and she talks on that old scratchy microphone thing. That old speaker is awful, and her voice comes out there, and we know it's her. And she's going to look at each other, and we say, that's Alyssa. So we start talking and she said sometimes she can catch my voice and she'll know it's me but if she hears miss glenda in the background talking or laughing or something she knows it's us right yes. and i try to fool her sometimes the other day i pulled up and i said i've got a coupon and i want this so-and-so sandwich and my wonderful wife and all of a sudden she started cackling <laughs> she started laughing i thought you treat all customers like that <laughs> But she knew who we were. But I like to tease her. What that's got to do with this, I don't know. I just thought it. <laughs> I was going somewhere with this. Can anybody make an application of this for me? Because I can't remember where I was going. How did she react? Oh, that's it. It was her reaction. Thank you. She reacted according to her training. Thank you, Steve. I tell you, somebody's paying attention. Amen. <laughs> That's where I was going. It was a reaction. She reacted according to her training. After she got finished cackling and laughing, you know, then she went right back to her, her agenda that she does, her thing. You know. This is, all right, what would you like to drink? And what would you, you know? And she just went right back to it. Didn't you? Yes. Well trained. I'm waiting for some comment. Okay, never mind. <laughs> I've completely left the sermon, but that's okay. We're going to stop right here because, listen, if we don't get anything else, folks, let's remember, and we'll come back and deal with this, Mark 16 and Acts chapter 2, verse 38. Acts 2, 38, one of the favorite verses of people who teach that you've got to be baptized in order to be saved. These two pieces of scripture is what we're going to deal with, and we'll come back and finish this. But uh, next Sunday, we'll deal with this. But please... Let's make sure we are careful what we put in our minds. Children and young people, can I ask all the young people in the church to stand up? Malia, stand up. There you go. All the kids, all the children, all the teenagers. Not you, Leo. You're not a kid. You, you old folks, sit down. 
Just the young people. You're pretending, pretending to be young. You may be in your minds, boys, but that's about it. I, don't worry, I've got the same problem. I understand. I still think I'm 21. Now listen, young people, listen to me. Listen. Seth, pay attention. Listen. Now listen carefully. Young ladies, it is so important that you put the right things in your minds. So important. You already know this. When I'm talking about this, you understand. You're old enough, you understand exactly what I'm talking about. You young men, you know what I'm talking about. You put the world in, you're going to get the world out. It's going to show all over you. Children, listen to me. You younger kids, listen to me. You need to learn now that when somebody around you starts using bad language, somebody starts using bad words, you need to turn it off. Okay? You don't, you're not supposed to be mean and rude. I understand that. But you do something to turn it off. If you have to start singing or, or, or if you can walk away from it and be polite, fine. As children, you have to be polite. I understand that. And you should be. That's what you're supposed to do. But you need to turn it off. If you can change the subject in the conversation. Hey, you girls, you ladies, you know how to do that. You ladies know how to... No, seriously. You know how to control a conversation. You've learned that by now. You should have by now. When somebody takes a conversation the wrong way, don't let them do it. Guide it back. If you have to, yank it back. Okay? If they start talking filthy, if they start talking vulgar, if they start using curse words, if they start talking about something that's, that's not Christian, not godly, you say, excuse me, we need to change the subject. All right? Amen. And, and especially if it's a young man, because the young man's going to do it. Amen. If he's got any sense, as my mom used to say, if he's got sense that God gave a goose, he'll, he'll change his tune real quick. Right, Ricky? Sorry. He'll change it. He'll back up and he'll say, oh, sorry. I'm sorry. Amen. He probably won't know what he's sorry for, but <laughs> a fella, it takes fellows a little bit longer to figure it out. But you young ladies need to be in control of the conversation all the time. Mm -hmm. and guys, watch your mouths. Mm -hmm. Watch your mouths. Speak like godly gentlemen instead of wicked, no good, dirty men. Okay? Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. talk, like, talk like godly young men. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm. Steve and JJ, I want to tell something that happened to me at work the other day, but I can't because everybody knows what I'm talking about, so I, won't, I can't say it. But listen, there's nothing un, more unbecoming, more uncomfortable for a Christian, more wrong for a Christian in this situation as far as conversation goes than to have somebody throwing filth and vulgarities and wicked talk in front of you and you're limited in what you can do about it. So don't, you know, don't put yourself in a situation where you can't control it. If you're at work and somebody starts talking nasty or, or using a lot of curse words, you're limited, aren't you, Victoria? At McDonald's, you can't tell them, hey, shut your mouth and talk like that in front of me. I mean, you could if you, don't, if you want to lose your job. Sometimes it's worth it. Take a stand and say, you're not, don't you talk that way in front of me. Okay? And if your manager says you're fired for that, find you another job. Yeah. Amen, Brother Burton? Well, I don't think most managers would say that. <laughs> no. Most, no, most managers are going to, if they're any kind of manager at all, they're going to stand up for you. Right. Yeah. If you've got a manager who won't defend you in front of that kind of stuff, you need to find another job. That's right. Yeah, because that's a sorry manager. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anyway, all right. Everybody on YouTube, I hope you're understanding all this stuff because I'm talking to our young people. If you don't like it, that's tough. All right. Now, would everybody else stand and join the young people, please? Are we going to mean business this week for living for God? Are we going to put the right stuff in? We'll come back to baptism, okay? I haven't forgotten what we were talking about. I'll come back to that. But let's, we need to obey the Lord. And in every part of our lives, we're affected by the things we take in. Right, Dakota?
The things we absorb into our mind, into our heart, through our eyes and our ears, affects everything about us. And if you want to change a Christian from a godly Christian to a carnal, worldly person in a hurry, feed them the wrong kind of junk. And they'll make that change just as quickly. You wouldn't believe how quickly a Christian can get worldly and, and wicked. Because we're capable of doing anything a lost person can do to, a, well, in scriptural sense. I wish I could have time to, to expound on that, but I can't. But as far as sin goes, we can do anything a lost person can do. Just don't let the devil talk you into doing that. All right. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for these adults and these young people and these kids who've been so patient to wait for the end of the sermon. But Lord, I pray that we won't just wait for the end, but we'll wait to say yes to you. Lord, whatever you've challenged our hearts about, if there's somebody that needs to be saved, please, Father, convict their hearts that they'll be saved today. Going to hell, spending eternity burning in the fires of hell is not for anybody in this room unless... They reject your son, Jesus, and they refuse to be saved. Lord, please convict hearts and show each of us what we need to do to be saved. Or if we're already saved, Lord, I pray that we'll each examine our hearts and make sure we're right with you. Make sure our sins are confessed and we're forsaking, we're turning from those sins. And with your help and with your strength, we're, we're staying away from those things, keeping them out of our lives. Help us, Lord, to be obedient to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Brother Don, do you have a song? I know last week we didn't sing. We're going to sing one verse. Would you sing along? What number? 261, trust and obey. What's the number? 261, trust and obey. 261? 261, your songbook. 261. Now listen, this is not just a song we sing to end the service. This is a song we sing because we're stopping right now. My preaching is finished. It's time to act on what God's spoken to your heart about. It's decision time. What are you going to do with it? What path have you chosen in life? Which way are you going to go? Whose hands you put your life in? What are you going to take into your life this week, into your mind and your heart? What are you going to fill yourself with? The wickedness of the world? Are, are godly things that will help you live for God. It's your choice. If you need to be saved, I beg you, please, right now, step out, meet me on the altar right now. I'll show you how to be saved. Brother Don? Let's obey the Lord, folks. Obey the Lord. When you walk with the Lord, it's just one verse. pray for us, dismiss the service, and uh, I'm going to meet with Micah and uh, everybody else who's interested in junior church. Meet me up here and I'll be there in just a minute, okay? Any, anything else we need to clear before, I'm, before we finish? Okay, very good. Lord, thank you today, Lord. Thank you for our uh, salvation, Lord. Even the message that we heard today, hopefully we uh, use it in uh, use it for you as we move uh, forward this week, Lord. Uh, be with us as we uh, depart and draw us up away. Bring us back to the appointed time. We'll give you praise, Lord, and glory. Amen. Mm -hmm.